Did you know that the development of an iPad is standard can take up to several years before it is finalized? For an instance, iPad 16, which deals with accounting for leases, took nine years and six months from the first day it was proposed to the final day it was issued by the International Accounting Standards Board. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Yama. I'm a certified management accountant working in the US. And this is another lesson in the IFRS lecture series. In this video, I will walk you through the entire process of how an IFRS accounting standard is developed step by step from the project proposal stage to the final issuance day. We will use IFRS 16 as our guiding example throughout this video. So without further ado, let's get started. The standard setting process begins with identifying the need for a new IFRS standard. This need can arise from consultations with various stakeholders, referrals from the IFRS Interpretation Committee, or issues identified during post-implementation reviews of existing standards. For an instance, in February 2006, the International Accounting Standards Board and the Financial Accounting Standards Board committed to working on a potential leasing project. That leasing project ultimately resulted in the development of IFRS 16, which addresses accounting for leases. Once the need is identified, the IASB drafts a project proposal to address the issue. The project proposal includes a clear definition of the problem, potential solutions, and the expected impact on financial reporting. For example, on July 19, 2006, the IASB drafted a project proposal on lease accounting, proposing to cover all aspects of lease accounting for both lessees and lessors. After the project proposal, the IASB publishes a discussion paper. A discussion paper offers a comprehensive analysis of the identified problem and suggests various potential solutions. The purpose of the discussion paper is to collect feedback from stakeholders, including investors, preparers, auditors, regulators, and other interested parties. The IASB uses this feedback to define its proposals before moving forward with the standard setting process. So the discussion paper is open for public comment, allowing stakeholders to provide their views and suggestions. For IFRS 16, the IASB published a discussion paper on leases in March 2009 and requested stakeholders to submit their comment letters by July 17, 2009. The IASB typically allows 120 days for comments to be received from stakeholders. Next, based on feedback from the discussion paper, the IASB develops an exposure draft, which is a formal document that presents a preliminary version of the new IFR standard or an amendment to an existing standard. The exposure draft is also published for public comment, usually for a period of 120 days. For IFR 16, the IASB published an exposure draft on leases in August 2010 and requested stakeholders to submit their comment letters by December 15, 2010. After the comment period for the exposure draft ends, the IASB reviews all the common letters received. They use those common letters to refine and improve the proposed standard before it is finalized. If more discussions with stakeholders are needed to address specific issues or disagreements, the IASB may release another exposure draft for additional comments. For example, for IFRS 16, the IASB published another exposure draft in May 2013 and requested for stakeholders' comments by September 13, 2013. The IASB once again reviews those comments and further refines the draft for the new IFRS standard. Once the IASB is satisfied with the proposed standard, they formally approve it and issue the new IFRS standard. For an instance, IFR 16 was issued in January 2016. After the issuance of a new IFR standard, the IASB provides implementation guidance and support to help stakeholders apply the new standard. And then, after a few years, a post-implementation review is conducted to assess whether the standard is achieving its intended objectives and to identify any areas for improvement. 
If new issues are found, the cycle begins again. Overall, this comprehensive standard setting process ensures that IFR standards are high quality, globally accepted, and capable of providing transparent and comparable financial information. The Due Process Handbook of the IFRS Foundation describes the standard setting process in detail. You can download a PDF copy from the link provided in the description below. All right, my friend, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have got value from it, then you will like this video where I talk about the complete list of IFRS and IAS standards. So go watch that next and I will see you there. Bye bye and take care.